He's the foundation of a new mythology. Could you talk a little bit about that? Well, it, you know, after Endgame, did you guys see Endgame out here? Anybody see Avengers Endgame? Oh, good. Okay. We wanted to do something different. The MCU is all about growing and evolving, and you look at the amazing work that, that uh, the artists and the writers and Stan Lee and Jack Kirby and everybody has done over almost 80 years in the comics, there's so many more stories to tell. And Jack Kirby created these characters, the Eternals, that is an epic that spans 7,000 years of human history, has cosmic connotations, changes everything we know about the MCU, and that is what we wanted to do along with Black Widow for the beginning of Phase 4, to announce something totally new, totally different, as we keep going to new places. And you said that the movie is going to pass out along this 7,000 years. The, the movie, Thanos. yes, it's slightly ambitious and takes yes. place over 7,000 years, and, uh, uh, from present day to Mesopotamia to all sorts of, awesome. of, uh, of locations and time periods, um, and really feels like nothing we've done before. And I'm glad that Brazil got that first look yes. uh, anywhere of that footage. I mean, even the cinema cinematography looks different uh, from the other Marvel movies. It looks it's beautiful. Our director, Chloe Zhao, is, is brilliant, has brought a new... She is two things. She's a giant fan of the MCU, a giant fan of cinema, and is an incredible filmmaker uh, who has brought a new look and a new vision to the MCU. And uh, we, in this new phase of the MCU, the idea is to all these movies to walk in the same direction like before, like we, we will have a new Thanos uh, sort of thing. Yeah, I mean, the MCU is all interconnected, but we really focus on one movie at a time. We're going to make the best Black Widow movie we can possibly make, the best Eternals movie we can make, the next Shang-Chi, Doctor Strange, Thor, uh, Captain Marvel, Black Panther, right? And keep evolving their stories. And then, yes, it's always fun to see them, to see them come together in a, in a master plan, uh, which is, I promise you, well underway. <laughs> and the Eternals know about the ex existence of the Avengers and... The Eternals know about the existence of the Avengers. The Avengers don't know much about the Eternals yet. Eternals? Celestials are a big part of it. You've seen, you've seen a little bit of Celestials in Guardians of the Galaxy. Nowhere is the severed head of a Celestial. We will see the Celestials in their full, true, enormous power in Eternals, yes. That's awesome. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm a little excited because I'm so happy because we showed this, this clip, this trailer in Brazil for the first time for our, for our com. And about the Eternals, uh, they are, they are going to be deviants too in this movie. Because we have deviants. Deviants, deviants yes. yes. Deviants are in the film. The deviants in the Eternals in the, in the Jack Kirby mythology, in the comic mythology, uh, uh, were both uh, extremely important plans of the Celestials. Uh, and we will see Eternals that look very different than any, uh, sorry, we'll see Deviants that will look unlike any Deviants you've seen in the comics. This is a new form of Deviants that we're uh, revealing in the movie. Are they connected to Thanos? Uh, Thanos in the comics was an Eternal on Titan. There, are, there, there may be connections, but really this is about introducing those ten new characters that uh, are played by an incredibly eclectic, amazing group of actors uh, that we're focusing on. It's awesome. And then, uh, would you like to talk about the importance of this cast of the Eternals? Because we have uh, a Latino woman, we have a deaf uh, that uh, uh, actor that they'll yes, hear. Yes, Lauren Yeah. Yes, and, and so yeah. so different cast. Can you talk about that? Well, I mean, it's important to us. The comics have done an amazing job of it, and over the course of our movies, we keep trying to do a, a, a better and better job of making our movies look like the world and the fans who goes to see the movies. To look like everybody, to see, people can see themselves up on that screen as these heroes, and Eternals is a tremendous example of that when you look at those 10 powerful heroes that look like all sorts of different people around the world. I want everyone in a theater to be able to see themselves in some form or another as the heroes in our movies. That's what, that's the fun, that's the wish fulfillment of what the Marvel Cinematic Universe is all about. What's going on guys? Welcome to Everything Always. My name's Michael Roman. That was Marvel President and CCO Kevin Feige talking in a quick three or four minute interview after first unveiling the teaser trailer and footage for Eternals for the first time at CCXP. Now you heard him reference that same footage two or three times throughout that interview and unfortunately they made everybody put their cameras away but it's 2019 and plenty of members of the press were 
over there. And now cooperated by multiple sources, we have a full breakdown and description of said footage. We're going to go over everything they showed from the Eternals and break down a couple of key elements you may have missed that Kevin Feige touched on during this four minute interview. But first, if you could grab the subscribe button, we're giving away two PlayStation 4 Pros, as well as a whole slew of other Marvel related stuff, including copies of the Infinity Saga limited edition box set. All you have to do hit the subscribe button, then hit the notification bell, leave a like and a comment on this video, and if you want, stick around to the end of the video, we'll get into all the giveaway stuff again there. Now before we double back to some of the details and bombshells that Kevin Feige dropped, not only about the Eternals, but about the big picture for Phase 4, 5, and 6, let's go ahead and jump right into the Eternals footage description. Again, quick spoiler warning, there were a ton of audience members that were both press and fans alike, so this has been cooperated by multiple sources. This is a description of the footage for real, and if you somehow want to wait until they release this trailer, probably for the better part of the winter and spring until at least it's close to Black Widow's release date, then go ahead, you might want to back out now, otherwise let's dive right in. Barry Kogan, who's playing the character Druig, who is a deviant, opens up the doors to what looks like a training camp. He finds part of the Eternals reunited with Richard Madden at the front. He stares at them and says, welcome, feel at home. The preview then alternates several images of the Eternals scattered around different parts of the world, all with sacred and magnanimous appearance. They all appear together in uniform, apparently led by Selma Hayek. In alternating scenes and glimpses, they gather around a bonfire, and Angelina Jolie appears lit by the bonfire. Selma Hayek appears riding. The scenes seem to alternate in many different cultures around the globe. There is one character who appears several times alone and is definitely a mysterious highlight of the previous, Gemma Chan. When they all come together on the beach, Chan clasps Leah McHugh in what appears to be a solemn act. The preview ends with Selma Hayek saying, These people have changed us. We need to protect them. Barry is playing Druig, who is a deviant. There is a romantic relationship between Icarus and Cersei. Kumal is seen dancing in a Bollywood number in the footage. Now, when you listen to this description of the trailer and compare it to both what Kevin Feige said about the film and what we already know via plot leaks and set leaks, then it follows along exactly. A, being super ambitious and breaking off 7,000 years of the MCU, and B, about the Eternals knowing of the Avengers and a lot of modern day events, but not knowing of being Eternals themselves and having to reunite and relearn their origin. Now, we learned a long time ago from an official synopsis that a love story between Dane Whitman, who's to play the Black Knight, and also Cersei is going to be the center of an age-old conflict, and if there's truly love between Icarus and Cersei as well, well then that's setting up an enormous love triangle, and we'll have to see if that comes into play with what happens to the Eternals and why they have to reunite to protect the humans, presumably in a war with the Deviants over the Tome of the Space God. Now jumping back into what Kevin Feige said about this film, outside of it just being ambitious and breaking off seven thousand years, also spanning the globe and incorporating a ton of different cultures and types of people. More importantly, he mentioned that they're just trying to make the best Black Widow film, the best Eternals film, the best Chang chi film for each character and franchise, and that in his words, quote, it's awesome when they can come together and cross over in an amazing way, which you can be sure is already well underway, meaning they've already planned out whoever this next big bad is, and making good on the promise that Black Widow would indeed hold a secret for our future, and wondering what the Eternals may unveil, you can only help but think, could it be Galactus or some ancient threat that's going to show up during the Eternals and eventually cross over in a call culmination event like phase four, five, or six, and what does this mean for the Secret Wars crossover event that we've all guessed for? Will this include the Eternals as well? Guys, let me know what you think in the comments about all of this. All the stuff that Kevin Feige said during the interview, the description of the Eternals footage trailer, and of course, if that footage is sourced anywhere where we can actually put it up here on the channel, we of course will as soon as it is, and quickly, let's get into the giveaway stuff before I let you go. We're still giving away two PlayStation 4 Pros, the next of which is at the 500 150,000 subscriber mark. If you miss the two winners at the 500,000 subscriber mark, all are announced in videos. It even has it in the title. It's a couple weeks back on Marvel Phase 5 dates announced. All you have to do to be entered to win either of the PlayStations, the next one we are headlong into and should hit by month's end or next month, hit the subscribe button, 
then hit the notification bell, leave a like and a comment on this video. That automatically enters you to win all the rest of the prizes here at the channel, including the two limited edition Infinity Saga box sets. These are completely sold out, limited in production number to 4,000. Once they finally sold out, people are putting them on eBay for ridiculous prices. We've gotten our hands on two here at the channel, one of which we're going to give away on New Year's Eve Eve, regardless of the subscriber count, the other of which 600,000. Again, all you have to do to be entered to win either of these, either of the PlayStations, or any of the future prizes that we give away here at the channel, hit the subscribe button, then hit the notification bell, leave a like and a comment on this video. The more videos you like and comment on because it's truly random, the better chance you have of winning. My name's Michael Roman, this is everything always. Guys, thanks for checking out the channel. I apologize, as you can tell by my voice, I'm just a little under the weather, but stick around, we'll be posting again real, real soon.